Rich has spent his entire career beating up on all of his training partners. <laughs> so, you know, there's uh, that. Um, yeah, it's that. It's that effect where you're like, man, that guy sucks. But then you, like, see him work out and you're like, oh, oh, he's still miles away <laughs> yeah. ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. There is always that loss of perspective for mm-hmm. literally mm-hmm. everybody who's ever gone and trained full time with Rich. Uh, just they spend two years losing every single day multiple times and yeah, you can yeah. see the light leave their eyes <laughs> yeah it's that's like, the same thing that happens with stuff that's what that's what i was saying okay <laughs> you know, like, that's no a matter thing, what by the way they talk about that like some wrestlers talk about that how sometimes was, was when uh, so there's a lot of college wrestlers who transition out into like kind of the freestyle world uh afterwards so they wrestle in like these kind of brutal uh, collegiate wrestling rooms, uh, folk style at Iowa or at Penn State, something like that. Then they go and they have teammates or they have underclassmen who take their place at their weight class. Then they go out into the freestyle world and sometimes they're having to face off against guys who are on the same team as them who maybe were the guys who took their place after them or whatever. And there's a whole, uh, and I've heard them talk about it, like an upperclassman, underclassman thing, whereas if you have it in your head that this guy, you know, who uh, was like a senior when I was a sophomore, who was always beating up on me in the wrestling room back then, if I face him off, face off against him at world team trials to make it to the Olympics, that they can't get over that psychological barrier. Yeah. I've heard them talk about like, you know, if this guy wrestles this guy, and there's have been instances where guys have come back you know, wrestled the person who took over their team, they still view them as upperclassmen versus underclassmen and can't get through that, and there was a result of upset. So you have to wonder, what's the confidence level of someone who, as opposed to being the big dog in his gym, who thinks, man, my dick is three feet wide because I'm beating up on everybody. I must be the fittest man alive. He goes into the CrossFit Games versus someone who loses every single workout every single day, and he knows that he doesn't have that thing in the back of his head that says, maybe on my best day, I will win the CrossFit Games. I'll beat everyone else. Instead, he goes in every day knowing on my best days, there's always one guy (laughs) who's better. Now, he might be the fittest guy on earth. And he's eating my Cheerios. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) During this monologue, he's eating my breakfast. (laughs) Yeah, that's 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 basically it. That's why everyone has moved away from Cookville, I think. That's that's a real thing. Yeah, Yeah, I'm curious to see an update, though, with uh, Fraser living in Cookville. You know. Training frequently with Froning. How Cliff, is that going? There is a chance that I may actually be able to answer that question at some point in the future. Uh-oh. Cool. And if I, I mean, I can't say a lot about it, but if I can, you guys are be the first people to possibly hear about it after everyone else does. Oh my it's gonna god. It's going to be great. Stay you guys tuned, be you guys. the first people to hear about it after everybody else yeah, does. Shut up, Chase. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, ah. so um, this yeah. Is how, this is how Cliff and I will hear about it. Uh, Armin will mention on the podcast. So you guys know how I'm going to Cookville. And we're going to say, what? <laughs> and then he's going to say, well, I tweeted about it, and I put it all over Flow Elite like a week ago. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, what is Flow I don't, I don't visit that website. <laughs> flow Elite? Ever since the wave turns uh, orange. orange from uh, silver, I just, it's yeah. It's just not the it. same, bro. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not the same. You've changed. Yeah. Um, you specifically. Yeah. Rich, uh, Rich Froning has th- – th- there's, a, there's a reason why I think Rich was very smart with how he presented himself in the years of his dominant Mm -hmm. reign. Um, He basically made himself the upperclassman and everyone else the underclassman Mm -hmm. for eight years, pretty much. Uh, And it worked, and it continues to work, because I still think people get into competition with him and believe that they should lose to him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, there's just... I cannot imagine after Matt Frazier's performance in the last CrossFit Games, that there's a rich froning out there who's not training for individual competition, who's beating him at anything. Well, okay, so that's a great that's a great point. And I I brought this up to um we have a we have a guy here, Ryan Fenton, who mm-hmm. works in, in at Flow and he's like he's a, a track guy mm-hmm. by by his his background. And mm-hmm. I was trying to describe to him the difference between Rich Froning and Matt Fraser because he asked me, he was like, so would who would win if, if Rich came back mm-hmm. individual? Which is a really strange question to ask mm-hmm. when like everyone's asking that question. It's mm-hmm. it's like cool that that question is like sort of transcending past mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. nerdy gym talk. Mm-hmm. And uh and I mean obviously I have no answer to that, who knows? But mm-hmm. the the thing that I kind of like explained to him was Rich Froning won the CrossFit Games four times as an individual 
never until the very end really having to push himself to his full capacity. Like mm-hmm. everything that he did, he was never – uh, I mean, he ran away with it on the last day of competition, but generally speaking, he had to like work his way to the top throughout the weekend and then spend the last day because he was so well conditioned dominating mm-hmm. the competition where everybody else was falling apart. But in each individual event, his whole thing, and he always said it himself, was all I'm trying to do is beat the person next to me. Mm-hmm. So he never really was forced to, um, you know, put out 100% of his maximum effort mm-hmm. because no one was ever pushing him to 100% of his mm-hmm. maximum effort. The only time we ever saw him do that mm-hmm. was in 2014 mm-hmm. when he, uh, after the first couple days, he had like a really bad start. Mm-hmm. He kept messing up workouts, messing up workouts. Mm-hmm. And then after the clean event, mm-hmm. they had the clean ladder, the speed clean ladder that year. And he was like two tenths of a second too slow to be in the last heat Mm -hmm. and therefore was like not in the last heat going into the final event of that day which was the uh, 2059 complex which is like uh, deadlifts snatches clean and jerks and then like this like toes to bar pull up uh, or like pull up chest to bar bar muscle up Mm -hmm. complex like Mm -hmm. 2159 like 777 and um you had all that down correctly. Yes. So for the full time of his entirety of CrossFit career, starting from the second event he ever did in 2010. So mm-hmm. 2010, the first event he was in like the second heat because it was like the first event he was ever mm-hmm. in. But from that point on, he had always been in the last heat and always just been beating the person next to him. Mm-hmm. And that was how he won the CrossFit Games. Mm-hmm. In this event, 2014, <laughs> it was the first time in his career that he needed to to do well in an event and it wasn't the people next to him he was trying to beat it was the people coming after him he was Mm -hmm. trying to beat and he tells this story about james hobart who had just gone telling him hey man it's gonna feel like you uh need to pace it but trust me you don't need to pace it Mm -hmm. just go out there go as fast as you can and it's gonna be over before you Mm -hmm. know it and rich came onto the field and delivered what can only be described as like a an earth-shattering performance to Mm -hmm. like it's a five and a half minute workout and he finished 40 seconds ahead of second place (laughs) and was just furious the entire time Uh so like if we look at the peak of his ability to like sort of move weight and like do work that was the one time he was ever really pushed now on the flip side you uh-huh. have the furious Matt Frazier uh-huh. who literally shows up every event and is like, fuck everybody. I'm uh-huh. going to fucking win. You guys are going to suck a dick. I'm taking first place uh-huh. in every fucking event at the CrossFit Games yeah. <laughs> and does not care whether he beats the second place person by like two and a half seconds or two and a half minutes uh-huh. to the point where like even when he's pacing an event like the last event uh-huh. at the 2017 CrossFit that Games. Was the, that was yeah. the only moment where he slows down for just a second. Yeah, he yeah. slows down for just a second, looks around and realizes he's still in fucking mm-hmm. first place yes and he's like hey uh-huh. what are you guys even doing with mm-hmm. your time do you not exercise do you mm-hmm. not practice this shit and mm-hmm. then goes on to fucking win that event again yep 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 yep, yep. the yeah. point is yes. you can't say who's better because we never really saw rich at his best in my opinion he yep. always rose to the level of competition mm-hmm. that he was presented with so i feel like if he was ever presented with matt fraser as his level of competition we would see a type of rich froning that we have not seen previously Mm -hmm. but matt fraser isn't giving anybody the room to breathe which you're right Mm -hmm. he's not letting anybody even think like if if you look at what matt fraser is doing and you try and compete against him and you allow him to get in your head Mm -hmm. you have lost yep and you will never win because this that is the game he is playing he is playing the game of i train harder than you I train better than you. Look how look how badly I beat everybody last year. Yes. Yeah. Just, just to illustrate that point, we put up a free a free workout with Jacob Heppner that we have that was like by all all means from what I've ever seen written on paper impossible. Oh, oh yes, I saw this. Yeah, yes. Seven 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 strict handstand push ups, ten ten, ten squats. Ten strict handstand push ups, seven overhead squats At every minute on the minute for ten minutes. And when Jake told us this workout, he was like, Hey man, This workout to me is impossible. In the meantime, between him telling us that and then us publishing that video, Uh he had completed it, but Mm -hmm. it took him a little bit of training to get it done. And Jacob is in the Central Regional, which is also where a so-called Matt Fraser just (laughs) moved to. Yes. Uh Jacob's probably one of the biggest dogs in the Central Region. Uh Matt Fraser found this workout did it just a motherfuck Jacob Hefner. And he specifically put up the w- video was like, I warmed up with this so-called quote-unquote impossible Some workout work. today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. <gasps> 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 I've been killed. 